<laughs> yo, 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 what's the deal, family? Welcome to Everything OG, the Crate Digging Show. Don't say that, man. Just say... Okay, go ahead. gonna say the crate digging show, the beat digging show. Well, I wasn't gonna say beat digging. Okay. All right, let's start. <laughs> beat roll. <laughs> all right, go all ahead. Right, right. Action. Yeah. Welcome to everything, OG. What's going on, yo? My name is Devin the Digger. Do me off, man. Play the crate digging show. <laughs> Right. Loopers, man. Loopers. Yeah, we had a lot of them. <laughs> All right, here we go again. All right. All right. Action. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, family? Welcome to Everything OG. It's your boy, Deviant the Digger. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Stuck on Stupid. <laughs> All right. Uh. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I, I, I All right. All right. Action. Yo, yo, yo. What's the deal, family? Welcome to Everything OG, the Crate Digging Show, right here on YouTube. Thank you for so much for subscribing. My name is Demon the Digger. Yeah, I think you just fall over? Yeah. <laughs> you might want to do that again, yeah. <laughs> Make sure it's uh, lined up the way you want it to. Action. Yo, 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 what's going on, y'all? Welcome to Everything OG. OG. Yes, sir, yes, sir. The Crate Digging Show, specially made just for you diggers out there. My name is Deviant the Digger, Mr. Everything OG. And I'm Building Block, the b double. Yes, sir, yes, sir. And today's episode, we got a special, special treat for y'all. We got a special guest in the house, Mr. Digger Extraordinaire, Quincy King, a.k.a. The Castle Love. What's up, family? What's up, what's up, fam? What's, what's up? up? Thanks for having me. I'm honored yeah. to be a part of this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You no. Know, yes, sir. And I then, watch y'all all, all, all the time, yeah. so I'm Come, glad to be here. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then, and here's the thing, though. Like, we want to get you on the show because, you know what I'm saying, like, I know that you, like, is, is, a, is a true master digger. You know what I'm saying? This collection is crazy. I see. Yeah, right. I see it up close. Now the collection is, is the collection is ill. I seen the collection up close. It's real sick. You know what I'm saying? So, he ain't know about Nat Adley. <laughs> <laughs> he all right. We'll get to that. But on the real, on the real, yo, Quincy, man, just tell me a little bit about yourself and tell me how you got into digging, man. Uh, I've always been in the music, uh, and um, my dad he didn't really have a crazy record collection. I started this all by myself, uh -huh. you know, and so. Um, what really got me into jazz was he had an album by Miles Davis called Kind of Blue. Mm -hmm. He had it on CD at the time. Mm -hmm. And I spent the summer listening to that record. And that got me into jazz, aside from listening to a lot of hip-hop. Mm -hmm. A lot of big Premier fan, obviously. A big Q-Tip fan. So that kind of started my quest in terms of learning about jazz. Dope, dope, dope. Well, I'm glad you mentioned jazz, because, you know what I'm saying, we knew that you was coming on the show today. So we're going to have to do a special show for all you diggers out there called talking all that jazz yeah just like the stethosonic song you know what i'm saying and we're just going to display some of our favorite jazz records not going to be a top five today because it's just too hard to do a top five favorite yeah. jazz album yeah. but we're going to give you some of our favorites and we're going to start off with mr b dub today you know what i'm saying some of his favorite jazz albums so let's do it let's get first our guest okay 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 that's that's respectful okay okay what's your first record you got in your like what's one of your favorite jazz records uh one of my favorite Favorite jazz records. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, my first that I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about is uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Black Beauty live at the Fillmore West. Miles Davis. Mm. Okay, and what's up with this record? Let me tell you about it. Um, okay, so basically, uh, if you're if you're familiar with Bitches Brew, he mm -hmm. basically like stripped the band down and took like a few members and went up north to um, up in San Francisco to Fillmore West. I think it's like Phil Graham. Uh, related or whatever mm -hmm. and they recorded there and um, he also did one in New York but this is my uh, my favorite one the West Coast show okay. flip it over don't yeah, it's the back cover that it reminds me of a uh, Jimi Hendrix uh, <laughs> yeah band of gypsies he was obviously artwork. really listening to a lot of uh, Jimi Hendrix around the time Sly mm -hmm. Stone the Godfather who just had a birthday okay so okay. And uh, is any any key cuts on this record that stand out to you, or just is all just? I'm really listen. into this song called um, "Sanctuary." Mm -hmm. um, the whole record is amazing. Uh, there's a song in there called "Directions." Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, 
it's just it's, it's one of the most beautiful records, beautiful fusion records you could ever wanna wanna have in your collection. Okay. So if you see it out there, Scooby. you should you should, pick, you should pick it up. <laughs> you should definitely pick it up. If you don't pick this up, you you sleep. You sleep in. I mean, the, the artwork is beautiful. Everything about it, it's a masterpiece. Nice, nice, nice. Word up. Thank you for that first entry, Mr. B Dub, Bill K, aka Building Block. What you All got? Right. What you got, man? To me, jazz episode wouldn't be complete without talking about the master of jazz itself, in my opinion. Uh -huh. John Coltrane. Uh -huh. I love Supreme. Yeah. Um, and I brought his companion piece, Alice Coltrane, because she has a version on this album with Love Supreme. I really love that song. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> to me, you know, I first heard it in Spike Lee's uh, movie, Mo Better Blues, uh -huh. when they were doing the Blink montage at the end. Right. Love that song. And after seeing it, I fell in love with it. And this here is a 68 pressing uh -huh. of the album. Nice. One day I'll get a little money together and get the 65 pressing. But, you know, it's stereo. And with Alice's version of Love Supreme, she has a guy narrating um, Swami Sachin Danada on it. And I found this way back in the day and I put it on and I just fell in love with her. I actually like her version more uh -huh. than John's, but yeah. I, I play them both though, you know. Wow. I had the chance to see her before she passed away. Oh, nice, nice, nice. So, at, at Roy Saul, so, so the wife outdid the husband on the, on the version, huh? You know, in my opinion, you know. <laughs> But don't take mine for a gospel. You know, take a listen on your own and judge for yourself because music is subjective. So, word up. And also, the Spike Lee movie was be, is going to be called A Love Supreme, but uh, Alice Coltrane or, or, or you know, his, his estate wouldn't let him use the title. Really? So they said you can use the song, but not the title. But not the title of the to be. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. They, they, they did. They did let him use the song, like you said. It was a yeah. movie, but they did not let. Of course him use the they title. did. <laughs> What you got there, Mr. Everything OG? Yes, sir. My first piece is this one right here. Classic. Bam. Bob James 1. And uh, everybody know about this record if you're digging, of course. No, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> of course, this is like an everyday record, but it's just so beautiful. And this is a, a, a masterpiece, in my opinion. And it's something that you have to have in your collection. Obviously, the you know Valley of the Shadows is one of the, one of the key cuts, but obviously, and, and uh, feel like making love is dope too. But everybody knows Nautilus is the jam, and uh, this is the one of the main reasons why you buy this album is for the song called Nautilus, and it's been sampled so many times in hip hop. There's too many people to name who sampled Nautilus, and I mean you can pick whoever you think used it the best, but it's been sampled at least thirty times in hip hop. You know what I'm saying? I, I, mean, I, I don't like Ocean Night. Uh, what, 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 what are you saying? Are you, are you blasphemy? Ultra magnetic? Blasphemy. MCs? Blasphemy. It was uh, all right. Uh, we're looking for a new co host of Everything OG. <laughs> Quincy, the spot can be yours. I'll take you. But anyway, uh, please. This is a great album. And uh, also, what's crazy about Nautilus is that um, Bob James did an interview once and he said that Nautilus almost didn't make the album because it was just a, a, a jam session. Mm. And then they was done with the album, and they was just they just was in the studio jamming like jazz musicians do, right. and uh, they was like that's what they came out with. It's like well, I might as well keep it. That anecdote, and that's yeah, why right. that's that's why it's the last song in the album because it just right. it just didn't almost make the album. So thank God someone's uh the brain started working on that because uh, <laughs> this had not been included, that would have been insane. And also um, a little companion piece in my opinion to this is not. Uh, is this record right here is uh, Grover Washington Jr. feels so good, and the reason why I say it's a companion piece because it's arranged by Bob James, mm. and uh, Bob is all over this with the, with the Fender Rhodes, just killing it. And this got some jams on here. Obviously, Hydra. What instrument did Grover Washington play again? He's a he flute. plays the um, well, he plays the the, uh, the trumpet. Trumpet. But okay. um, but what's crazy about this record is that to got two like equally to me equally banger cuts. Hydra and Knucklehead are two just great records. Once again, two records been sampled a million times in hip hop. Um, you know, one comes to mind is uh, uh, How Many MCs by the Boot Camp Click, uh, Black Moon. You know, they did that song, How Many MCs, where they used Hydra. They used it pretty dope. But uh, I got to give it to my man Q Tip, 
who uh, had the foresight back then to uh, take the isolated kick and snare from Hydra and program his own drum break on uh, Check the Rhyme, which is one of my favorite Tri Call Quest songs. So mm. uh, Q-Tip did your thing on that, you know what I'm saying, back in the early 90s. But anyway, Bob James, one, and Grover, two of my favorite jazz albums. Q, what you got next, man? I have next is a record that eluded me for for years. Uh-huh. Perception by Catalyst. Uh-huh. Um, I saw it. I'll just tell you a little bit about it. I was walking to a record store. I won't name the record store. They had the record. This other cat saw it. I saw it. And needless to say, he beat me to it. It took me 20 years. Is that the to one find that I got? This record. Is that the, <laughs> is that the one? That, what do you mean? Remember, because I found one at Avalon. <laughs> And I bought it. Uh, well, no, 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 that's not that story. That was you. Yeah, that, but that, but no, I didn't buy it. But, no, but, but I'm saying I had bought it, and then you was like, "Oh, I was gonna get it." Oh yeah, I was gonna I, get and it. And I got it. Before I was gonna get okay. it. Okay. I was gonna get it, but it's the same album that you're referring to. See, all these people, they, they take their time, and then I come in and grab it. And, uh, <laughs> it, it's a, it, I had, obviously, you know, you know, like like my brother Building Block said, you got to do your homework with some of these records. So you know, if you know about it, you know about it, you know what's on it, and all that stuff. But it took me forever to find this record, and when I found it, oh man, it was just a, it was a beautiful moment. So this is uh, my second favorite record, uh, "Perception" by Catalyst. Nice, nice, nice. Can I kick it some real quick? Yeah. All right. So like with these records, like I'm not much of a jazz dude. Mm-hmm. Like some of these, like Bob James, I know, but like you gotta imagine some of the people watching, they're like babies. Okay. They don't know anything. Give him like like Bob James was a keyboard player. He was on this label called CPI. Like I know the stuff you guys all know, but it doesn't mean everyone watching could know. You know, and so, then you can get to like and and then of course Bob like the, the deep knowledge. Okay. Like I don't know much about Callis. I think Callis was like a four piece band. They had electric piano. That's like all I know. But like the p- people watching, like Callis, what's so up? we should like John like, Coltrane play the saxophone. Yeah, like like fill them in with like some basics and then kick into like what you really know, just because it, it'll help someone watching like learn. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Next up, you got my man Build a Block. What you got, man? Next up, I want to talk about a, a song I like. Uh-huh. And the song I like is spread across three different artists. Uh-huh. Um, Red Clay, Freddie Hubbard. Which is also on the album Windows by Jack Wilkins. Yes, sir. And it's also a version by Mark Murphy uh-huh. on Mark Murphy Sings. <laughs> 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 um, I don't know which version was first. Oh, well, I think Freddie Hubbard's Hubbard version was first. Was first. Yeah, Fred, Freddie was first. It's hard to say which version is the best. The most known are the Freddie. Freddie Hubbard and, and uh, the Jack Wilkins. Uh, Freddie Hubbard played the trumpet. Jack Wilkins was a guitarist. I'm not sure exactly what Mark Murphy did. I think he was just a vocalist. Yeah, he's a jazz vocalist. vocalist. Yeah. yeah, jazz singer. So if you want to hear a version of Red Clay with words, Mark Murphy. <laughs> you want to hear it with the guitar, Jack Wilkins. And drums. And you want to hear a nice trumpet version, Freddie Hubbard. And that tone, that tone, uh, Sweet Sue, is a, that's a nice, that's a nice one on that Freddie Hubbard too. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Freddie Hubbard, Hubbard was on CTI. This one is easy to find. Jack Wilkins, which is on mainstream. This is a little bit more difficult to find. Uh-huh. And I can't really say about Mark Murphy. It's on Muse. Very easy to find. And I think I got mine at the flea market. So. <laughs> Dope, dope, dope. Word up. Next again, in the, in the game. Uh, let's see what we got here. My favorite. Okay, this right here. We got Ramsey Lewis, Sun Goddess. Break it down a little bit more for this game. Mm-hmm. Bam, bam, bam. Ramsey Lewis, Sun Goddess is one of my favorite albums of all time. Come, come in the frame a little bit more because you're, you're. Keep an eye on the camera because you're, you're coming out in the, you're only half your face. Mm-hmm. So okay. you got to lean in a lot more. Okay. Yeah. Ramsey Lewis. Let the people see your pretty face. And uh, <laughs> this is one of my favorite albums of all time um, for many, a bevy of reasons. 
And uh, one of the reasons I like it is because I'm a big Earth, Wind & Fire fan. And Earth, Wind & Fire, Maurice White, they produced this record. And it's really, really dope. Um, what instrument did Ramsey play? Ramsey played the piano. But, um, Quick to a fault, Dizzy Gillespie played the sax. That is not true. That is not true. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the biggest... And Grover, and Grover <laughs> played sax. Too. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Grover does play the sax. Yeah. Um, my bad on that. But uh, Sun Guy is one of my favorite albums. And also, uh, as a little companion piece, Earth, Wind & Fire actually redid the song on the Gratitude album, which is a live version of Sun Goddess. Mm. And that's how my how style dope the song was. It's, the song was so dope, they took it back from Ramsey. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like when Prince took back uh, How Come You Don't Call Me? No by, uh, by, uh, Tevin uh, by Tevin Campbell. You know what I mean? He just took the song back. Because Tevin wasn't doing it right. So uh, I, I can't front on Tevin's version. He, he, now, Tevin's version was tight, too. But Prince's is better, though. I ain't gonna say that. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna let Tevin have his shine. <laughs> That's right. And, and also, um, you know, I gotta give props to uh, Maurice White too. On this, uh, I'm right here, Ramsey Lewis trio. And this is called Another Voyage. Yeah, and so you see your face, man. And what I like about this record is this is when uh, Maurice White, before he um, formed Earth on the Fire, he was Maurice White's uh, drummer. I mean, he was a uh, Ramsey Lewis's drummer. Maurice White. Yeah, Maurice White was Ramsey Lewis's drummer. Oh wow! And the Ramsey Lewis trio, when uh, Ramsey was doing stuff on Cadet, because um, you know they all come from the Cadet family, um, which is the Chess family, and uh, Maurice White was just one of the um, musicians over there playing the drums for a bevy of records on Ch on Cadet and Chess. But he ended up uh, joining the Ramsey Lewis trio and helped guide uh, some of um, Ramsey Lewis's uh, production and stuff like that. So that goes back to my theory that a lot of the R&B artists that turned out great with jazz artists in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Maurice yep. White, right. James Ntume. Mm -hmm. yep. Wow. Yep, and what's cool about this record is, though, um, another, Eden. Eden. another voyage is cool about this record, too, is that uh, one of the songs on here is called um, Yoruhu. And uh, this song, basically, to me, is the genesis of Earth, Wind & Fire. This was, like, the vision that Maurice had. You could see where he was going. Because it sounds like an, Earth, an early Earth, Wind & Fire song. Mm -hmm. Even though this is like from the 60s. And uh, you could just see where he was going with the kalimba that he would play and stuff like that. So I definitely recommend this one too. Just as an added extra piece, Ramsey Lewis Trio, Another Voyage. Pick up all three of these. Ramsey Lewis, Sun Goddess, Gratitude. I mean, and uh, Gratitude by uh, Earth, Wind & Fire. Pick that one up too. Q, what you got, man? What I got is... Drum roll. Mm -hmm. Monk Higgins. Woo! Extra... Soul Perception. Yes. It took me forever to find this record, like the Catalyst that I mentioned before. Um, Damn, I felt bad I had three copies. <laughs> <laughs> this guy has multiple copies, quadruple copies of, of, of the same record. You know? Bam. Bam, right? But anyway, a funny story about this record was, was that I went uh, digging with this brother. We had went to a, a record show. Mm -hmm. And um, early in the morning, and I'm going through, going through. Uh, I think we're, we're Mike Vegg's table. I think yeah, I, we're at Mike Vegg's table. And um, shout out to my brother Adrian Young. Today is his birthday. And um, so I'm, I'm digging. I'm digging the art form. I'm digging with uh, with this brother. We digging, and I'm digging next to Adrian. And I I skipped over this record. Uh, so I hadn't known that what the cover looked like. And so I just knew what I was looking for, but I didn't know what it looked like. And so he kind of pulled the Bill, he kind of, you know, pulled the Bill Duke moment on me and was like, yo, you know, you effed up because, uh, you know, so I was like, he's like, are you going to get it? I was like, nah, nah, you can take it. And then I was like, I was like, oh man, please don't tell me. And he's like, yeah, yeah, it's on here, son. You, you effed up. And what you're referring and then we to, started laughing. what you're referring to is the gang star sample. Yes. Uh, you know, um, um, for, uh, uh, what's the name of the song? Um. Call of the streets. Call of the streets. So the hard to earn. Hard to earn. Little yeah. green apples. Mm -hmm. Little green apples. It took me forever to find it, but when I found it, you know, I was I was really happy. But that moment with Adrian was real funny because we both just had to laugh about that. So did he let you get it? Uh, he did not no. let me get it. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was so funny, man. I was like, yo, like you know, so can I? He's like, now nah, I'm gonna get you some son. Yeah, funny story. story. <laughs> My first copy I bought from Adrian Young store when they were in Little Tokyo. Oh, okay. Okay. It was on the wall, and I bought it from there. That was probably that one that he skipped on. <laughs> well, no, it was on the wall. No, I'm saying like he. I mean, but he, 
at that time he still was in Little Tokyo, I think. When 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 we were digging, when you were digging next to him. Oh, he still, had, he? he still had his old store back then. Oh, oh, oh okay. Adrian Young was the person that took the record from Yeah, him. yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. it was you. No, 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 no. <laughs> no it was, oh, so um, maybe that was the one. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So he, he it, it was so funny because it was like, man, he was like, yo, you know you, uh, you, you know you effed up right there. And I was like, and right when he said it, I was like, man, please don't tell me no green apples is on there. And it was on there. I was like, ah. Oh! Matter of fact, my first two copies I got from this store. Well, see, see, yeah. multiple copies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got two copies of it. Just, you know, three, four copies. I mean, I have two also. But anyway, <laughs> and I now have two. So, <laughs> but shout dope. out to Dex Records. Word out, word out. Dope story, man. What you got next, Mister Building Block? Uh, uh oh, what's this? The Scavenger, by Nat Adderley. Uh, wow. Enlighten me, please. Um, sure. <laughs> Nat Adderley is known is known along with his brother Cannonball, Julian Catterball Adderley. Uh -huh. And they both play hornwind instruments. Well, Nat Adderley plays a trumpet, brass instruments, and Cannonball plays a trump I mean the saxophone, brass the weed reed instruments. Nat plays a cornet too. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with this particular LP, I'm just gonna say, do your homework. <laughs> <laughs> Do your homework. This, you know, when I found out what this was, I was elated, and I grabbed it. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> you probably should say though what it is for those that don't know what you're talking about. All right, they forced me to snitch. <laughs> <laughs> this album contains an infamous sample from Juice. Uh, excuse me, Know the Ledge by Rakim on the Juice soundtrack. That, that, that ominous bass line, this is Nat Adderley. That's dope, though. And uh, the song is The Scavenger. Uh, I mean, look at the lineup. That's dope. Joe Henderson, Joe Zalamo. That's dope. Joe yeah, yeah. Joe, Joe Henderson, Joe Zalamo, Mal Esty, Jeremy Stig. Uh. And it's on Milestone. Milestone is another good label for jazz. Milestone, Prestige, Riverside. Fantasy, That's dope, Mainstream. Man. That's dope. I gotta admit, I did, I did not know that Rock Kim's for for a very long time. So, uh, which is funny because I thought I was the last one to know. <laughs> <laughs> so, salute on that because I never, I always wanted to know what that was, but you know. Yep. Right. Sip the juice. Because I got right. enough to go around. Yes, sir. Well, what next, you got, ne dude? next in line is this for me right here. This is uh, Lamont Johnson, nine. And uh, there's not a lot more I can say about this in terms of the, uh, when I see the word masterpiece to me. Masterpiece jazz album. Um, it's just amazing. And uh, you don't see it that much. It doesn't come up that much. But um, it's just an amazing piece of work. Um, and... I mean, every song is so dope, <laughs> but the, I would say uh, nine is my favorite uh, cut on here, which is like a little uh, thirteen-minute uh, cut that has like different parts to it, and it's really dope. And uh, I definitely recommend this record nine if you ever see it. Just take my advice and pick it up, please, because you will not be disappointed if you love jazz music. And uh, I, this, Lamont Johnson, he plays uh, the piano, and. Uh, it's got Ronnie Laws on here. Uh, he's he's in the lineup, and so is uh, Indubal. Mm -hmm. Indubal's on here Rest too. Rest in peace. Yes, sir. And then Chuck Rainey's on here too. So uh, it's a great body of work once again. And uh, nine, a nice listen. Just, just chill out. Throw it on a needle. What, what does it remind you of? It reminds me of um, just a smooth Sunday afternoon. You know what I mean? Just you just. You just put it on and you just <coughs> enjoy the day, and um, it's just a, a wonderful listen. It's like you almost like you just become so in tune with the record, like everything else is is tuned out. Yeah, that's how I am when I, when I listen to this record. And uh, it took me a while actually, to, like you know, with some of your experiences, it took me a while to get this record. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I, I was I, I I came across this record like a few uh, years back, but didn't get it. I kind of made the mistake of not getting it back then, and then, and it took me a few years after that to find it again. So uh, I made sure once I saw it again, I grabbed a hold of it immediately. Is that the one from the bookstore? 
No, I didn't get this from the bookstore. I got this from a dealer, but um, um, I heard that that I don't tell them I heard yeah. that they have one there. I, I should have went up there. I should have went there and grabbed a second copy. I actually yeah. found his first. <laughs> I found his first album. I didn't buy it. Uh, the one on mainstream. Uh huh. It's, yeah, I'm a, I've been God. curious about that. Yeah, I haven't heard that one yet. I've heard it was okay, but it's all right. This I one, I didn't buy it. This one is is a masterpiece. I like the I like the cover art on it real quick. It reminds yeah. me of the oh, placebo yeah. a little bit. Yep. I'm saying? I was thinking ball of eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So, once again, scoop. Yeah. Kill what you got next, man. One of my favorite jazz records of all time. Mm-hmm. Is he's coming by the Warriors Ubiquity. Nice. Big, Warriors plays vibes. His production is amazing. He's an amazing musician. I had the chance to see him at least once. I would love to see him more. Or again in the near future if I could if that happens. But um if you if you know this record, you know everything from the cover. Um obviously Smith and Wesson, Boot Camp Click, they borrowed uh their the cover that they made for their record mm-hmm. is is the, the straight from this. And they, they use a sample too. And they use a sample. And, and, I mean, and diggable too. Yeah, there's a lot of samples on this Roy Ayers record. It's a masterpiece. I'm not going to say what sample it is, like my brother said, you know. Uh, I'm going to tell you what song, but yeah. uh, they definitely, <laughs> there's definitely a Diggable Planet song in there. Uh, there's was, definitely some Diggable, um, yeah. you know, but um, my Did favorite flip, over? my favorite flip was, um, you know, from my one, one of my favorite producers we talk about all the time, Jay Dilla. Mm-hmm. You know, he really cooked something up mm-hmm. for, for uh, Lil this Brother. One. With oh, okay. uh, Talib and, oh, uh, yeah, uh-huh. and, and uh, Yasin Bey. Okay, okay. He, and he got flipped time. It. Right. Yes, yes. Mm. So if you see this record, if you see any Royer's records, you should, you should, you should pick those up. Except the ones from the eighties. They kind of. Well, the couple from the eighties yeah. that they get a pass, but yeah. Oh, on melodic those. <laughs> you can find maybe a song or two, yeah. maybe, but like yeah, but anything from the seventies. If you if you don't pick them up, you sleep. Yeah, especially so, the Polydor days. Yeah, the Polydor days yeah. for sure. So mm-hmm. wake wake up, like yes, brand newbies would say. Yes, sir. Mister Bill and Black, what you got next, homie? Um, again, this is more so a song that I like, and the different versions of it. First up is a Donald Byrd band and voices, the uh-huh. famous cover of him over the fancy car. What what hip hop artist had a um a cover similar to that? Tone Loke. Tone Loke. Uh-huh. And Donald Byrd plays the trumpet. And the song that I that I fell in love with is Cristo Red- Redentor. Uh-huh. Um it's a very mellow, melancholy song with dramatic rises in it. And it, it's like he singing lament lamenting how do I how do I phrase it? He makes the horn lament. He gives it a lamenting tone to it. Okay. And you just it it just hits you, you know, like uh, it's you, inside. you know. Nice. And um, since I heard it, I you know, I saw all the versions I could. I what found, label was that on? Uh, Donald Bird is on Blue Note. Uh-huh. I don't know if this is one of the the original ones with the. Uh, Blue Note is a hell of a label. No, it's a man, Van Gelder. I don't Blue know. Note. It's crazy. What can you say? I don't know if I see an ear on here, but it does have the Van Gelder stamp on it. Um, and I found this Charles Kennard. Uh, Charles Kennard, he played the organ. And if you, a lot of his later albums are very funky. Uh, and I found this one. I had never heard or seen this one before. And he has a version of Christo Redentor that I fell in love with as well. Nice. And he has Cal Green on this album as well. Really? Playing guitar. Nice. Oh, that's a trio record. Yep. Charles Ooh. Pinar, Cal Green, and Johnny Kirkwood. Uh-huh. Donald Byrd has uh, Hank Mobley, Donald Best, Kenny Burrell on guitar, Herbie Hancock on piano, Butch Warren on bass, and Lex Humphrey on drums. Yeah, that's a nice record. And just to round it off, Harvey Mandel, a guitar player. And he has a version of Chris Redentor on here that is awe-inspiring as well. Actually, it says Duke Duke Pearson wrote it, so maybe there's a version by Duke Pearson I haven't heard yet. I, I need to like, sync out. I feel like there is. I think there is. I feel like there is. I thought Donald Byrd was first, but I'm probably wrong. I feel like there is. Duke Pearson has some amazing records on Blue Note, by the way. 
Duke Pearson is amazing. Yes, sir. One of my favorite albums of all time. Is a is a deep person right there. But we're gonna we're gonna get that. You know what it is? Pluto. This okay. one says okay. Pluto episode. I won't even talk anymore. <laughs> it says arrangements by Duke Pearson. So maybe Duke Pearson wrote it and arranged it, and Donald Byrd was the first to perform it. Uh, oh, Rich Perkins. I have to do some more research on that. Oh, and that was and that was the brother y'all was talking in the soundtracks the other day. Um, uh, the education of Sonny Carson. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Nice. Way to connect. Way to connect. We have yeah. somebody that watches and pays yeah. attention. <laughs> <laughs> Word up. I All gotta right. take him off of here. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> All right, next in, ga- next in the game for me is, uh, I call it the Q-tip combo. That's right. You know what I'm saying? The Q-tip combo in the house, and this is why. Um, Money Alexander Raz, great album. Money Alexander was a piano player that really um, had some really smooth jazz albums back in his day, and this album, he kind of tampered with the Fender Rose a little bit. Mm-hmm. And he didn't really normally do that. He used to play the acoustic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mostly, normally. but this album, he, um, you know, tinkered a little bit with the Fender Rose, and it came out lovely. Yep. Because uh, he's got a version of Let's Stay Together and Love and Happiness on here Love and by Happy. Al Green. Love and Happiness, man. And uh, I think everybody knows that... Uh, so how is it the Q-tip combo? Well, I call it the Q-tip combo because uh, Q-tip used... Um, Love and Happiness for um, Apache. Apache. Oh, um, Gangsta, Gangsta Bitch. Bitch. Yes. And I like the way he used that, too, by the way. And uh, I, think I, I love the way he used Beat it. Beat Nuts used it. Beat Nuts used it, too. I like their version, too. But, Large uh, Pro. Obviously, uh, obviously. Uh, Tip got ill with it, Tip though. got, you know. I don't know. Ill. I kind of like the Beat Nuts version better. Okay. Okay, okay. Let off a couple. <laughs> hey, let's, let's, let's win in. I mean, yeah. I mean they, they both the back win. Cover. You know what I'm saying? This is the back cover of that. Once again. And then this right here is uh, Ronnie Foster. Ronnie Foster, and it's called Relax Yourself, Girl. Yeah, yeah, this is Ronnie Foster. Yes. And uh, this album right here, um, Two-Headed Freak, is amazing. It's on Blue Note. And uh, it's got uh, some crazy dope records on here to listen to. It's a really good listen. He does Let's Stay Together also. Is it? uh, Why is this one famous? Well, uh, this one is famous because it's a big... uh, Try called Quest Sample on there, one of their biggest records. It's on um, Electric Relaxation from Midnight Marauders. From Midnight Marauders album, which and, is uh, uh, a whole nother conversation. <laughs> a whole nother conversation. <laughs> we ain't going there, but uh, <laughs> I don't care who's better. <laughs> Midnight Marauders is way better. No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, anyway, so these are two dope jazz records for my Q-tip combo, and. Uh, Please pick them both up if you ever see them. Um, they're both kind of um, tough to get in terms of like, so you don't see them every day in the record store, but uh, we come across them occasionally. And, uh, you know, they're definitely um, worth buying if you see them for a reasonable price. School boom. Yeah. You had Q- another, huh? You had another Monty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to have the little French French pressing of the. Um, the that's, Mon- that's the version I have. Yeah, it's the French the pressing version. of the Monty Alexander Raz album. So, you know, Man, don't, no, don't let me no, discourage no. you. You know what I'm saying? If you want to pick up the French uh, copy, I mean, don't don't they let both have don't, the same back. Yeah, don't let that discourage you. Yeah, I want to get that copy. Yeah. But so this is the American copy. Then, yeah. Right? That's American. Okay. Yeah, I need the American yeah. copy. Exactly. So pick those up. What you got next, Mister Quincy in the house? I have. Oh wow. Tamika Blue. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's a that's a sought after piece, my friend. This is a very sought after record. Mm-hmm. Um. Let's clean see, too. It's, it's very <laughs> clean. Um, it's just a beautiful jazz record. Um, Erica Badu brought me here, or uh, brought me to this direction with looking for Tamika Blue. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a song on a record, Mama's Gun, called Didn't You Know. Mm-hmm. Produced by Jay Dilla. Produced by the, the mm-hmm. my favorite producer of all time, Jay Dilla. And... Um, I know he takes exception to that, or you know, yeah, yeah, long, he's not. long conversation. <laughs> I for agree. Me, for me, that, that's that's my that's my dude, you know. And um, so yeah, if you find this Tarika Blue, you should pick this up. Um, if you see it, pick it up. Re- really think about picking it up because this it'll it'll change your life. No matter you know? if it's if the price is steep, you pick it up. Because the price is going to be steep. That's that's <laughs> it. Hey, pick, pick it up. You know? That's the nature of the game. Pick, pick it up. <laughs> I mean, I just, you know, we're warning you, the price is going to be steep when you see it. Well, I don't say that. Because they might find a flea market that might get I mean, by yeah, it's you, possible. You know. Anything's true, possible. True. Yeah. Let's but hey, like Red, people. But like Red Man, just go and pick it up. Because it, it will, it will, it, it's worth it. 
And actually, Erica Badu said that um, she um, was going through his uh, Jay Lewis collection, and she actually just you know picked that up a bunch of stuff, and they were playing records together. Yeah, at, at his house. Yeah, that was, that's the story. You know what I mean? So. And that, and you know, they heard, they both heard that that clip, mm -hmm. and um, and the rest is history. The rest is history. So, so. yes, sir. Bill and Black, what you got, my man? Um, I'm going to talk about Cannonball Adderley and a few of his David Axelrod produced records. Um, rest in peace, David Axelrod. And rest in peace, Cannonball. Cannonball. Um, I'm going to start off with Cannonball Adderley, Love, Sex, and the Zodiac, uh -huh. which is a narrative by Rick Holmes, which basically they go over the Zodiac signs and he plays music to accompany it. Rick Holmes was an L.A. DJ? Uh, I, I believe I, he was. I've heard yeah. that, but... I've heard that. You know, and a companion to that is Soul Zodiac, uh -huh. which is more of the one you see more often than you do Love, Sex, and the Zodiac, which uh -huh. is very similar. This right. one's a double LP. Mm -hmm. This one's a single LP, but they both have Rick Holmes. This one goes more into depth than this one. But they're both on fantasy. Well, actually, this is on fantasy, uh -huh. and this is on capital. Ah, yeah. And this one is produced by David Axelrod. Um, this one is another David Axelrod, like I said. And since we're talking about double albums, I want to talk about Soul in the Bible, which is another great one, full of samples. Do your homework. Do you see that one often? I've only seen this one out twice in the field. I don't see it that often. You don't, yeah, you don't so see this one, but this is Rick Holmes and has the Nat Adderley sextet. Cannonball Adderley actually just pre presented it. Uh -huh. I mean, he plays on it, but it's produced by Julian Cannonball Adderley and David Axelrod. Uh -huh. So it may be more so a Nat Adderley record. And this brings me to my favorite Cannonball Adderley record, Country Preacher. Uh -huh. um, again, do your homework on this one. You'll hear so much hip, so many hip hop production production quotables on this one. Yep. But my favorite song, which I only, before I had the album, I only had the 45 of humming, and I would just wear that 45 out playing it back and forth, man. Um, I always wondered. Uh, Ohio Players has a version has a song called Pain, uh -huh. which damn near sounds like an exact rip of humming. Yep. You know. They stole it, huh? <laughs> yeah, or I, you know, I don't know who came out first. I have to check the dates, but I always heard pain, and then I hear humming. I was like, I don't know who came first, but humming was the one that grabbed me. And you know, you have Jesse Jackson giving the the famous uh, introduction uh -huh. in the beginning, mm -hmm. and you know, this is one to grab. It's on it's a nice Capital as well. Classic. Dope. Classic. All right, well, we come with a classic. And this is one of my favorite Ooh. albums, period. Idris Muhammad, Power of Soul. <laughs> the back cover right there. Ooh. And this album is a monster. Masterpiece. And, uh, yeah, it's a classic, a masterpiece. And, um, of course, um, he's got Bob James on there, Grover Washington Jr., Ralph McDonald, Randy Brecker, Joe Beck. I mean, it's just a... All star lineup, and of course, uh, every song is a banger. Every song. What, what, what's your favorite song? Um, I like uh, uh, Peace of Mind. Peace of Mind is my favorite. Peace of yeah. Mind is my favorite joint on here, but Lauren's Dance, of course, yeah, is a is a is a yeah. is a is a favorite too. I like the saddest thing too. That thing's amazing. Grover uh, Washington has a version. Of yeah, of Lauren's Dance. Yeah, and it's dope. Um, that's what I liked about the CTI. They covered mm -hmm. a lot of the same songs. Yeah. yeah Similarly, yeah, like yeah. how Motown artists covered a lot of the same songs. But, uh, exactly. This this uh, uh Power of Soul is a good song too. The Real whole record. Funky. Yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah. And I remember like a long time ago, uh Power you know Soul with Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, yeah. Jimi Hendrix written wrote that cut. And uh I remember a long time ago, like uh I remember listening to an old hip hop C D. Uh, I don't know how I listened. I don't know how I got a hold of the C D. Mm -hmm. I don't remember what, what happened, like, cause I normally would never listen to them like this, but it was like uh, the Bloods and Crips, <laughs> one of those Bloods oh, and Crips oh, albums. Okay. 
Okay. And they sampled a power soul, but it was uh, <laughs> but it was funky though. That was about to come out with a joint, man. You better stop you know playing, saying? man. But, 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 but I mean, we did not endorse the Bloods and Crips. <laughs> no, we but the Bloods and Crips can make some good music. <laughs> but but uh, but they had but they version though that they sampled was funky though. I was like, oh, they used it kind of hot. Banging on wax. Yeah, banging on wax. I was. It was kind of hot how they used it though. I was like, oh, oh, look at, wow. I was like, look at these these Crip niggas. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, this is a dope album. You gotta pick this up if you don't have it in your collection. I demand you go to the record store after you watch this episode of Everything OG Cover. and pick it up immediately. <laughs> go to your record store, go to the jazz section, and see if he has Idris Muhammad, Power of Soul, and also as a uh, little extra honorable mention is uh, Rusty Bryant Fire Eater, another dope jazz record. I love this album, Rusty Bryant. Um, He's a, a sax player, but what I like about um, a tenor sax player, but what I like about this album is Hedges Muhammad is on this album, and he's playing the drums obviously on this album because Hedges Muhammad is the drummer, and he has a fat drum break on this Rusty Bryant Fire Eater album that is amazing. Just out of nowhere, the it, everything breaks down and he just comes with a fat drum break. It's sick. So pick this one up too if you're a really big Hedges Muhammad fan also. It's okay. I mean, it ain't as fat as you make it sound like. <laughs> it's kind of fast, and you really can't separate the kick and snare to get a good, punchy sound. Like, you have to use the loop more so than break it down. This is a fat drum break. It's all right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this is a fat drum break. Leave a comment if you think it's a fat drum you know maker if it's overrated. You know what I mean? Michael Jackson was going to use it. <laughs> also, leave a comment about that. <laughs> Also, leave a comment about Nautilus and how said G flipped it. Yeah. Let me ask oh, you, please. Let me ask you a question. You ain't got to leave a comment about that. What? Like, <laughs> what was uh? What was Idris Muhammad's name before he converted to yeah. Islam? I don't know. You got me I don't on know that either. One. You got me on that one. <laughs> you got you got me. You on got that me on that one. one. That but I mean, mean <laughs> if you know, leave a comment. Or uh, you got anything left, uh, Mr. Q? I have one honorable mention. Okay, what's your honorable mention, man? Bayate. Ooh. Okay. Um, any, I'm a big, um, I love vibes. That's probably like one of my favorite instruments besides piano. Uh -huh. One of my favorite vibes is behind, or um, one of my favorite vibes is, is uh, Mr. Bobby Hutcherson. Uh -huh. Anything with Bobby Hutcherson, I pick up. So you, so you like Bobby over Cal? It's Bobby and then Cal. Yeah, okay, those, wow. those are my two dudes on vibes. Uh -huh. What about Roy? And, and Roy, and Roy. So three, so three. But I, I have like, <laughs> I have Bobby. No, actually it's like this. I have Bob. Bobby, I have Roy, and then I have Cal J. What about Gary Burton? He's he's four. <laughs> <laughs> he's four. Uh, that's how it goes. It goes like Bobby, Roy, and Cal. They made some of my favorite favorite records ever. Um, the standout cut on here is um, what about Lionel Hampton? Free Angela. Lionel Hampton is cool. Okay. Lionel, Lionel Hampton start. has some joints. He, he has he, <laughs> Lionel Hampton has some joints, but my man Bobby Hutcherson went in. Um, the standout song on here is Free Angela. Obviously, uh, Angela Davis, famous Black Panther. Uh -huh. um, I'm not going to get into who sampled or whatever. Just like my brother said, you know, you got to do your homework on it. But if you see this record, it's it's exceptional. It's a great listen. It's a must-have. Pick it up. Word up, word up. One thing I want to say about jazz, what made this episode so hard, because, you know, for me, I'm not a jazz traditionalist. You know, you have hard bop. Hard jazz, hard bop, classic, free jazz, spiritual. Jazz can take on so many different forms. And also the definition of jazz, it's really no set definition. I read an article one time that Miles Davis didn't even like the term jazz. He liked it to be called social music because they played music while people were socializing at the clubs. And, you know, and in saying that, I want to talk about. Donald Byrd. Now, Donald wasn't the first artist to fuse jazz with other genres. I believe Miles may have been the first. Yeah. And like I said, so many albums, this is, you know, we touched on Miles in the beginning. But Donald Byrd and his run with the Mizell brothers yes. is what attracted me to jazz music. Mm -hmm. what, what I really gravitated towards. You know, we have Street Lady. His first outing with them. Uh -huh. um, Beautiful record. Yo. We have Blackbird. Yes. His second outing with outing with them. And you know, I love this one because it has the red, black, and green. Do your homework. Liberation. Yes. 
Do your yes. homework because it's a very famous uh, sample Colors in there. Yes. Sample oh, in all there. of them are full of, full of samples. My favorite of the Mazel Brothers and Jamal Bird offering, uh, uh, offerings are is Places, places, places and Spaces. spaces. Uh -huh. This one. Black Moon. Do, do, do. Tupac. You know, you got to make sure you got the Donald Bird with his face on the inside. You know? Yeah. But, you know, this one here. This is the one I, I searched high and low for this album in the 90s. Yeah, know. that was a hard record to find in the 90s. It was. Or not, man. Now, a, lot of, a lot of them, were, were, you know, that we talked about were kind of hard to find back in the day. Nowadays, it's so, like, you so see them just tossed to the side, and it hurts my heart to see them like that. Yeah. <laughs> this is one I used yeah. to just buy, just whatever. Sure. Yeah. And that's why I was, how he has all these copies of different <laughs> records. And then the last one, Step into, Stepping Into Tomorrow. This one, Think Twice, is the jam on here. Yes. Yep. Uh, Think Lisa Twice. Lisa Lucia Nicole jam, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, let's let's get let's get the, let's get the proper the proper the proper <laughs> let's get the proper credit to my professor. You know, I was messing with you, man. You know, <laughs> you know, we had to give the proper uh, credit to the. Beat nuts who flipped it for Cooler Coyote. It's the road runner running thing. Yeah, Chi Ali. Yeah, but we got to see. I know. Uh, obviously, main source is the. You know what I mean? Main source is the main main. Tribe reason. too, right? Tribe used it too. Yeah, they did on the first yeah, album. They did. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. They did. They did. They did. Yeah, they did. People, yeah, people yeah, forget yeah. about. But hey, once did, again, but once again. But I don't know. Main source might have. Came, I think main source came out before. No, Tribe was first. Tribe was eighty nine, ninety, and uh, main source was ninety one. You're right. I but I think, I think our professors is better than Tip, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I'm, I'm all right with that. I'm but okay. the Mazel brothers, they were um, disco producers. Mm -hmm. And they, they hooked up with a lot of the jazz artists at the time. Bobby Humphreys, mm -hmm. Donald Byrd, uh, yep. even some gospel artists. Mm -hmm. Johnny Rance Hammond Allen. Smith. Johnny Hammond Smith. And Rance Allen produced that. Rance Allen, yeah. yeah. And they, they produced some masterpieces that you put on to get the dance floor going to this day. Well, before we get out of here, I'm going to do an honorable mention real quick. Actually, you can do honorable mentions all episode, man. Well, I did companions. <laughs> I did companions. And we were trying to say, you brought up honorable mention. <laughs> no, no, no. I did companions. <laughs> yeah, but you said honorable mention one time. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> I, I think you did. Larry Willis, man. Inner Crisis. And, um, that's, woo, that's a nice record. Too. This album is incredible. Nice. And it's one of my favorite jazz albums of all time. What did he play? Uh, Larry uh, uh, Willis plays the, the electric piano and the acoustic piano, and um, it's it's amazing. Al Foster's on here too. On drums. Al Foster, yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, this album's on Groove Merchant, a label we hadn't really talked about yet. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. But, but Groove Merchant was a dope jazz label. Absolutely. And uh, Wilson, O'Donnell Levy. Uh, yeah. And this record right here, uh, Inner Crisis by Larry Willis, is one of my favorite albums. Yo, I saw Al Foster with uh, Steve Kilwin. A word. Yeah. Wow. Right at the Jazz Bakery. Wow. Met Steve Kilwin. Yeah. Well, my favorite mm -hmm. cut on here is Inner Crisis, the title cut. And um, also, Out of the uh, out on the Coast is dope, too, real funky. Mm -hmm. But uh, Inner Crisis is my favorite because it's an ill sample. <laughs> so don't take my sample. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, but uh, scoop it up you see it. Whenever you see this record, scoop it up. You don't see it that much. You don't. But, you know, if you come across it. It's been reason, reissued. Though. Yeah, if you come across so. for, for a reasonable price, this is everything on Jewelry. Yeah, yeah, yeah everything, everything on Jewelry. You know, man. <laughs> we do not promote the unlawful duplication <laughs> and second-hand reproduction of original material on this show. You know what I'm saying? I mean, why, why, why dare you speak blasphemous? <laughs> I'm just talking about like this you, want own, you want to make your own reissue episode <laughs> or show? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only talking about just in terms of people's pockets. You know what I mean, like you know. No, but no, but no. Everything. This is obviously everything. OG. So my, 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 my. we won't be inviting him back. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so this concludes our episode of talking all that jazz on everything. OG. Everything. OG. Thank you for uh, tuning uh, in. Before you cut, any final words? I'm, I was just, you know, I just want to say thank y'all brothers for having me. I'm honored to, to you know, grow with y'all to learn that what you guys have to teach me. And uh, just props and peace and keep doing your thing. 
Word up. Word up. And where can I reach you at? On, on Instagram or anything? Yeah, you can hit me up on Instagram at the Castle Love. Okay. Word up. And you know me, Stevie the Digger. That's Building Block. Mr. B Dub. Yes, sir. Thanks for tuning in. Peace. 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 <laughs> yo, 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 what's the deal, family? Welcome to Everything OG, the Crate Digger Show. You're gonna say the Crate Digger Show, the Beat Digger Show. I'm gonna say Beat Digger. Okay. Alright, let's start. Big roll. Alright, go ahead. Alright, action. Welcome to Everything OG. What's going on, yo? My name is Demon Digger. Do y'all, man? Alright, here we go again. Alright, action. Yo, 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 what's up, family? Welcome to Everything OG. It's your boy Demon the Digger. Stuck on stupid. <laughs> All right, uh, are you good? <laughs> All right, All right. All right. action. Yo, 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 what's the deal, family? Welcome to Everything OG, the Craig Digging Show, right here on YouTube. Thank you for, so much for subscribing. My name is Dean the Digger. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Make sure to line up the way you want it to.